a servant of the secret fire, wielder of the flame of our lore. The dark fire shall not avail you. Go back to the shadows. You shall not pass. So I was just kind of having some fun there. Um, welcome, welcome, and Happy New Year to everyone. So I finally finished, finally finished the um, Therapeutic Light Wand project, and it took me longer than I expected. But just to sort of recap briefly, I did this for really a few reasons. Um, uh, you know, one, just to get a little bit better with 3D printing and things like that. Um, secondly, that there is this whole um, sort of uh, sub-discipline that's emerged of um, photobiomodulation, where they're looking at different wavelength, wavelengths of light and the effects that it can have in terms of uh, being helpful to people with different conditions. And what it probably all boils down to is that um, sunlight like you get every day most of that spectrum is probably going to be good for you um, certainly we know that we get vitamin D produced by ultraviolet um, uh, portion of the spectrum which if you don't take an excess is very good because it keeps your vitamin D levels high but they're now seeing especially with the spectrum towards infrared and red that it has a lot of physiologic effects as well and I imagine they are finding, and um, I, I, do, there doesn't seem to be as much on it, but I haven't read that much on it, but probably all of the different um, components of the visible spectrum uh, are probably uh, helpful and have some physiologic effects. But the one, the, the area that's been looked at most is um, infrared and, um, and red light. And so I thought, well, you know, I'll put together a therapeutic LED light wand. Originally, just uh, to sort of say a little more, originally they, they thought it was only with laser light. They were using low-powered laser light and getting these therapeutic effects, but then they saw that it was also there with LEDs, and I suspect that, um, as I said, it's probably there with any sort of light that's uh, strong and mimicking the spectrum that you get from sunlight. So at some point, you know, I'll go back to the, uh, the Journal Club Friday and we'll look at photobiomodulation and have some fun with that. And then a final reason that I put this together was um, that these things cost, you know, something like I put together, like, you know, five, ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, they would probably charge 250 bucks for it, and it cost me $50 to make. I mean, they, they have these just, like, ugly things that, are, you know, they're, they're not battery power. They don't, you know, they're like 100 bucks. And then they have some of them that are literally like $1,000, and it's, uh, you know, the $300 ones I don't think are anything better than what I did. They don't even have a potentiometer. You know, I, I realized once I was done, it's pretty useless. Um, but that means it would be even cheaper. I mean, this was, I can't recall. I, I did a whole video on the parts list. It's worth checking out. <laughs> um, but that was, you know, it's uh, maybe 30 bucks a part and 25 if you get rid of the pot. So enough with talking. This is uh, then just the, the video log of, of after I designed the thing, got the parts, and then I finally had to put it together and, and get it to work. And surprisingly, it, it did all work on the first uh, on the first go round. There's things I do different, and I'll, I'll do a little video on that too at some point, like an after action report. But um, why don't I shut up now, and we'll just go through the, the build of this, because I had a lot of fun building it, and I hope people will have fun coming along. If anyone requests it, I'll put all the STL files on um, some public drive so that anyone can do this as well. Okay, here it is. So here are all the parts arrived from DigiKey. Uh, so I'm just going to unbox them and uh, make sure everything's there. So there's our um, push button switch. This is the battery holder. 
this will have to be, it's wrapped, but that has to be the potentiometer. Uh, I'm sure it says it somewhere, potentiometer. And there are the LEDs. So now, print the parts. So since I've shown just about everything else on, on how to do this project, if you want to replicate, I should probably just show this too. So let's suppose you have your piece here that here's going to be like the handle. It'll say light wand um, for the, the LED wand. And you've made it in Tinkercad, but now what do you do? Because um, you actually want to print it. So how do you actually do that part? So the first thing you want to do is you say export and you export it as an STL file, which I guess is a standard. And it's now been exported. Okay, so that's pretty good, but until you actually slice this thing, then you still can't print it. So the STL file gives you the information, but it needs to get into a format that the printer understands. And so then you go to this program, which is Ultimaker Cura. They have a number of different slicers that you can use, but this one seems to be one that's very popular and is almost sort of a standard. Sometimes the printer will come with its own slicer software or whatever. So um, this thing has so many variables. I mean, I'm just scratching the surface, but you can see already it's been set so that it knows what my printer is, the Ender printer. And again, there are variables upon variables that you can fiddle with, but the defaults, once you have your printer set, are pretty good. So now we want to say open file. And well, I already did this, so here's the copy of it we just exported, but we'll go to the other one. Okay, and now there it is. Now you want to say slice. And so it does that. And then it tells you about how long it's going to take for it to print with this particular printer. So about 3 hours, 43 minutes. Then you say save to disk. And if you have like a, a little bit higher end printer, more higher end, then you could just shoot it over wirelessly. But I've got to use um, sneaker net with this one that I've got. So you put it on a removable media walk over, plug it into the printer. But, you know, I will say this Ender printer that I have, it's sort of like a, um, you know, like a 1980s Toyota in terms of, you know, features, but also how much you can just work on it yourself. As compared to the XYZ Da Vinci, it's night and day. I mean, that XYZ Da Vinci, once I got over just the coolness factor of having a 3D printer, the thing stinks. The, the prints weren't one-fifth as good. Well, I shouldn't be too harsh, but the print quality wasn't near as good, and they had this crazy thing of trying to lock you into only their PLA material, which was just a disaster, and the thing broke after a month or two. So that's my review on those those two printers. So this one's a lot more bare bones, but it, it, it's got it where it counts. So I've got the thing about halfway printed so far, about half the parts. So far I haven't run into any problems. One of the things that I'm I'm actually really surprised about where I'm saying this is a really good printer, I 3D printed these screws and the screw holes and they actually work. I thought it was just going to be a big blob of plastic down there. But, you know, even these, I, you know, it's not like I'd build a house with it, but they actually work. I thought that was, that was kind of cool. So here we're just printing now that part that um, was shown on the computer, the handle. And you know, one of the tips that you don't get very often is um, you put like a high voltage spark there to kind of um, deionize things for the, the air for the PLA to flow a bit more smoothly and, and you'll get better prints that way. So, actually, I, I just made that last part up. I don't know why. I just thought it's like so science fiction it needs a spark gap. So I just put the spark, I put the little wind first machine next to it. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> so, but you know, I mean, heck, it sounded good. It would be even better if it was like, a, you know, one of those Jacob ladders where the, the spark goes, you know, floating up in the air. That would have been even better. 
But, anyways, this is, you know, like four hours, and then there's a bunch of other parts. Let me shut this thing off. So it's still got a while to go. And, you know, as I think about it, the Jacob's Ladder, that's not a bad project. I might have to build one of those. So here's that piece right off the printer. And I got to admit, I, I like it. It fits the hand well. And even the, the lettering turned out really, really good, at least uh, in my mind. So what I want to do now is I have, you can see how dark the PLA is. So you're going to have the, the LEDs coming out. And granted, they're, they're pretty unidirectional. But at the same time, it would be nice to kind of have them on a little more reflective surface. So I ordered this, and um, it, it's silver. What do they call it? it but it, it, it's not a very bright silver. It, it looks more like a gray to me. Eh, it doesn't look gray. It doesn't look terrible. But I think once it's dried, I'm going to try and get the contrast back there. It, it was hard to paint, actually, to keep the paint in there because it's so small. But it looks all right. I'm going to put the whole, you know, this is still the easy part, but I'll, I'll put the whole handle together now. So this is probably a good time for a little bit of an update. So now I'm getting down to the heart of the matter, and I'm trying to print this. And I give this maybe a one in three chance of printing. And the reason is that it's hollow. So you see, I mean, it'll be all right like there, but when it gets out here, it's just kind of almost going laterally. And I think when it gets out there, it's just going to start falling down and not hold together. But maybe. I mean, the problem is the thing takes nine hours to print. And I'm not going to know until I get a few hours in whether it's falling down or not. Now, if it does fall down, I'll fill in the majority of this. I might fill in all of it. But I'll fill in a lot of it, and then it'll take like 18 hours to print. But I won't have to worry about it not being able to print. So that's where I'm at there. And now I just I put together, I mean, this this looks good. I put this, uh, here's your switch. And I'm just, I'm pleased as punch with these screws. Now, I'll just say a little bit more as I'm going along here. I mean, i got to take this apart because um, I need to put one of these wires through there. So I need to take it apart again. So I'll show you. So if this will work, I, I'm using this big screwdriver, and that's because you know the, these aren't like steel, so you don't. It'll be real easy to strip the screws. Well, I have the thing apart now, so you see this is how it looks. This goes in there, but what I forgot is they don't both go down there. One of them one of them goes one of the wires goes out here um, which will go to the battery and then the other one will go down through there to the potentiometer they don't both go through there so I had that wrong so that that's what you want and you know just between you and me that that little ender does such a good job printing this plate basically just snaps in I mean it, it almost doesn't need any anchors or really the only anchor that it needs would be this. But I went ahead and I three <laughs> these screws, which I'm amazed that actually works. So I might as well go ahead and use them. And um, if I had to do it over again, I'd leave them out and just anchor it with that there. So like I said, you could just, you could get away with just that, that anchor, but I'll put the screws back in. So like I said, I like, this part's nice. So the next thing that I got to do, so this, this part will come through here and go through there and it'll attach to one leg of the pot and then the other part of the pot will go out through that gap and go out to your LEDs. Now the only little bit scary thing is I, I only ordered one of these push button switches and so there's going to be, I should have given myself more space here because there's just nowhere for the excess 
wire to go, so I'm going to have to clip it short. And then I would like to get away. Now I've got to run it. I've got to run it through there, or else these things won't come together flush. Once you got the pot in, there's really no space for any excess wires. In other words, I'm going to have to clip this thing short, and then hope that I don't screw anything up. You know, where it's like too short or something like that, because I only got one of them. And then, uh, do I have to solder it? I don't like soldering. I mean, I could, and it's not a lot of soldering. I don't do a lot of soldering. That's why I don't like it. But I think I can get away with just winding it. I just need, to, what I'm saying is I just need to get the length of this wire right so that it's not in the way when I put the, uh, the cover on this side. So then you'll have your push button switch on this side, flip it over. There'll be a dial here and that'll be where you can dim the thing if you want to. So, if it'll focus. I mean, I don't know if that's going to hold together through the whole thing. And the darn thing's going to take so long to print. So I might, as I said, I might have to not hollow that out. But here's this, you know, so here's this. And then you're going to have the battery pack turned out great. The battery fits in perfectly there. So that'll go up there. And then your switch is there. And then the wand face there. Um, so, so far so good. This, this has been a disaster. I don't know what I'm doing with the paint there. I think I just, it'll like take me a you know 15 minutes to try to do that right so i may revisit that or, or that may just be kind of like a rustic it'll be a rustic look <laughs> or i may try to fix it i'm, I'm not sure yet the first is going to be you know the actual important part getting that to work all right well i don't know if i'm boring people but i'm i'm having a ball so um i'll just kind of you know do i even want the pot that's what i'm trying to figure out now so here I have two of the LEDs that we'll be using hooked up in series, and they're each 2 volts, so it's looking for 4 volts. These are 3.7 volts, but when you charge a lithium ion, they charge to about 4.2 or at least up to 4. So if I just, if I touch this here, that's bypassing the, um, the potentiometer, and so that's what we get which is nice now if I touch it here this is the well I'll do the pot closed first so there's the pot fully closed if I can do this with one hand I'll try and open it so there's the pot fully open and what I just want to make sure is that when it's fully open there's not so much residual resistance that it's dimming it so that's just That's direct, and this is through the pot open. They look about the same. So, I mean, there's really no reason for this potentiometer except to, to kind of, like, be cool. Um, and it would also extend the battery life. Like, you might find, well, I don't need the thing at full. That's way too much. And so you turn it down halfway. So I, I mean, I don't know. It's just kind of fun to have a dimmer switch. So I am going to keep the pot, and now I have to figure out how to get it joined up and get these two parts together. So that's what I'm going to work on now. Okay, so here's the next question. I apologize about like all the Star Trek noises going on with the thing there. It sounds like the bridge of the Enterprise. I mean, I should, I should solder these. The problem is, you know, the way this thing's set up, I can't have this piece out of the way so I gotta solder them in there and I don't have much experience soldering I mean I've soldered a few pieces before but it's not something I do a lot of it's not something I'm good at and I I'm gonna hope I can get away with this so I'm just gonna try to tape those in there and make sure we got a secure connection one of the neat things I mean this this did work just putting that there and then the the spare that I cut off, that'll be the part that goes out to here to um, head towards the um, head towards the LEDs. I again probably should have soldered them, so I hope those hold together because I super glued these together. So now I'll put on 
this and screw that in. Uh, the only thing, the, the thumb the thumb wheel dial I got wrong. It's the, the wrong size. But that's what's so nice about, you know, 3D printing. It's like, oh, another two cents down the drain. So I need to reprint that. Um, but it, otherwise it looks good. It just, I got that diameter wrong. So I've got the potentiometer battened down. And where'd it go? Where'd it go? Here it is. This thing's supposed to go on there, but you see it doesn't fit. So I'm going to put that on there, and I'm looking at it now. It's a little too small. I mean, I think it should be about an inch. This is three quarters of an inch, about an inch in diameter. And that'll let you adjust the potentiometer. Looking at it again, the 3D screws, um, I need to tighten that one a little more. They're absolutely unnecessary. I could have just locked it in with this here, just as on the other side. I could have blocked it in with that there. So it's just kind of like, oh, they were cool. But if I had to do it over again, get rid of this screw, this screw, this screw, and that screw, and you haven't lost anything. So unnecessary complexity. So the next thing is going to be to link the battery pack to here. And I'm trying to decide if I've, like, made a fatal error here. So the battery will go in there. The positive will come to here, go to here. The negative, the negative of the battery goes to one end of your LEDs, and this is still your positive, and it's got to get all the way through all this to the positive. And I, I mean, I should have put a channel in there like that, and I didn't. So it's not like you know fatal error, but I need to reprint this part. But I think I think I can swing it around through there and run it out there. So, I mean, there's, it, it, I don't know. I mean, it's not like I've done this for a living, but you know, you can see as you go through it, it usually the first time around, it's like, well, you know, I would do that differently. And so I'm seeing that. I mean, there's four unnecessary screws here. There should have been a channel here, but I think everything will work just fine. And, you know, the screws look kind of cool. So, all right. Let's see what I can do with this part now. Okay. Hold everything. Hold everything. So, I said these two screws were useless because you could just screw it in there. And those two screws were useless because it turned out you could screw that in there. And all that's true, but I thought... These two screws, I need those for where you change out the battery. But if you can see it somehow, yeah, you can see it there. Somehow, with how I super glue these together, it's off just like a millimeter or two. The screws don't want to screw in. But, here's the neat part. This thing is so snug in there. Again, I'm not... I'm not like complimenting myself. I'm complimenting the printer. The printer printed this thing so well that it's so snug, it clicks in with these things like locking it in. It just clicks in. And so what I've decided I'm going to do is just get rid of these screws too. I'm just going to reprint this one part just as a, a solid part and just make sure that I have something there where I can wedge it out because it really gets in there snugly. And then once you wedge it out, then you can get to your battery, which you're going to have to do every couple days. But that'll be a lot better than these screws, which, yeah, it worked. I mean, I was impressed. It actually worked. But three four times they're they're probably gonna strip anyways I mean maybe I'm just making that up because I want to do it this way now but you know trust me th this is a this is a feature it's it's not a bug it's a feature so I'm gonna reprint that part and have that there but let's see what we've got so far so here's where we're going with this so we've got you know the handle we've got the switches the potentiom the switch the potentiometer the battery pack and here is where your light face will be. And so we hit this. You shall not. Yeah, we're not there yet. You maybe want to go a different direction because I have two LEDs lit. 
and I give to you, Frodo Baggins, the light of Elendil, our most sacred gift. May it be a light for you when all other lights go out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love those movies. So, this, once we get the face printed, boom, there, and instead of two, there'll be like 40 or 80 or however many there are. And we've already done the calculations that it should fit with battery. So, there's a lot that I would change on this, but, you know, it's come together pretty well. I, I can't complain. Okay, so here's a little good point for an update. So, I got this part printed, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But, um, before we get to that, then I ran into a snafu with the printer. So, I'm not going to pretend like I'm Mr. 3D printing guy or whatever, but it was just like the print material was coming out so thin and so i i cleaned the print head and you know that's a little bit of an ordeal and it would do like a third of this print and then it would just be garbage again so i realized okay i have to change the print you know the printer nozzle and you know that involves wrenches and this that and the other and it's like am i gonna just break the thing but again i mean the thing's like a 1980s toyota and you know you just have a few wrenches and you're good to go so i got the printer nozzle changed there was a bunch of gunk in it even after i cleaned it and um made a beautiful print now i'm a bit of an idiot i think well not not really i know what i was thinking is that i was originally going to print this the other way we'll get to that in just half a second but i printed this as two parts and i'll need to glue them together but first I'll just, you know, here's all the LEDs. So you have you have a positive bus line here, a positive bus line here. This is in series to there, and then a negative bus line and a negative bus line. Those two negative bus lines, those two positive bus lines are connected. And the amazing thing is I didn't use a drop of solder. And I don't know whether I should be ashamed about that or brag about that. Because, I mean, you, you could put a solder line right there, right there, right there, right there for the bus lines. I, you know, I mean, how often do I solder? And when I do, it's just like a big blob. But it's like really the way this thing was designed, you really don't need to solder. Everything's just twisted together. And then you turn it over and and there's your face and that's going to be all the leds now there's space there for four there for there for there and for there it when you actually put it together it's sort of like all right well now i need another line like this for each of those and i'm i'm starting to get sick of this oh, shh. <laughs> starting to get sick of this so here's where things stand now, and you can really see it starting to come together. Um, so the battery, there's the the negative, and you know that I should have used red magnet wire, but assuming I mean, that's the positive. So this will go to the positive bus line. This will go to the negative bus line. I'm going to give myself plenty of extra wire because if if you lose these, there's a lot you'd have to do. So there's really only three more parts, and it's actually only going to be two. The next thing after this is wired up, and I've seen that it works, is put a, another half moon here to cover this over so you have it like that. And the other would, would be these screws actually just with gluing everything together, the screws didn't fit. But it doesn't matter because the tolerances from the print are so nice that you have these two, you know, arms out there, the thing actually just clicks in. I'll show you. And it just clicks in fine and, you know, stays there fine. So, again, like a zillion things I'd do different. I, I wouldn't even bother with screw holes. I would just let this thing latch in and put a little place there to, to wedge it out with your finger or a, a little screwdriver. So I'm not even going to reprint this because I just use these now to wedge it out if I need to. So a cover there and then I had the diameter wrong for the potentiometer. So the potentiometer um, there 
and then it's ready to go and you just put these you know like over a wound or you know if you've got a little psoriasis or something like that and turn the thing on and you don't have to worry about a cord and then it should last uh, two three hours which would be plenty and then you just recharge the battery and go from there so the last lengthy part to print will just be the half moon cover here and then we're done so here it is finally finished or at least as finished as i'm going to make this one there's a lot that needs improving um, but it looks pretty good again that paint didn't really work out too well so we'll let me show you how it works we'll have a little fun with it I am a servant of the secret fire, wielder of the flame of Arnor. The dark fire shall not avail you. Go back to the shadows. You shall not pass. So there it is. And it works, uh, it works like a a flashlight too and it, it's red light so it probably wouldn't wreck the rhodopsin if you're in your eyes if you're like taking a pee in the middle of the night or something <laughs> who knows what it can do all right enough fun so again it finally is wrapped up and it didn't go perfect by any means in fact i'll do like an after action report video everything that that I would change the second time around and I probably will do a second one of these just because I want one that's going to be true infrared lights instead of red lights and the reason that I want this again there's a whole field that's come about called photobiomodulation and it's basically just using they originally were using low power lasers and then they realized well LED lights work just as well and so this actually is a therapeutic um, device and you know the way you could use it like I have a little bit of psoriasis on the top of my left foot here I'll, I'll show you <laughs> no, I, won't, I won't gross people out and maybe I will actually I'll do like a before and after um, but don't worry about that now but what you could do is you see you would put it over um, if you were using it dermatologically you could put it over something like that and just leave it there while you're typing away or whatever and then um, you know leave it there for a half hour or an hour you're gonna have uh, two three hours of runtime from the battery and then you could just take it out and recharge it so that's the way you use it there's a lot more to say about um, both the health effects and what I'll do different for the mark II version I'll get rid of this for one thing. It doesn't need a potentiometer. It was stupid. The whole thing could be narrow. I'm not going to do that now. That'll be a, another video. In any event, it's finally finished. And it, it I kind of like it. You know, it's sort of it's like a club or a shillelagh or something. But uh, yeah, you know, you could see a wizard like coming in with this thing. Okay, so I hope everyone had fun and um, happy new year to all. I'll try and do a video talking about, you know, what are some things to look at in the new year and what are some projects that I that I may work on and um, maybe look for people's input as well if they have ideas. But stay healthy, everyone. Happy New Year. Thanks for coming along. Bye-bye.